It had been prophesied of old, and foreseen from the ancient days, that its enemy would come upon Thlunrana. And the date of its doom was known, and the gate by which it would enter. Yet none had prophesied of the enemy who he was, save that he was of the gods, though he dwelt with men. Meanwhile, Thlunrana, that secret Lamaserai, that chief cathedral of wizardry, was the terror of the valley in which it stood and of all lands round about it. So narrow and high were the windows, and so strange when lighted at night, that they seemed to regard men with the demoniac leer of something that had a secret in the dark. Who were the magicians, and the deputy magicians, and the great arch-wizard of that furtive place nobody knew? for they went veiled and hooded and cloaked completely in black. Though her doom was close upon her, and the enemy of prophecy should come that very night through the open southward door that was named the Gate of the Doom, yet that rocky edifice Thlunrana remained mysterious still, venerable, terrible, dark, and dreadfully crowned with her doom. It was not often that anyone dared wander near to Thlunrana by night when the moan of the magicians invoking we know not whom rose faintly from inner chambers, scaring the drifting bats. But on the last night of all, the man from the black-thatched cottage by the five pine trees came. Because he would see Thlunrana once again before the enemy that was divine. But that dwelt with men should come against it, and it should be no more. Up the dark valley he went like a bold man, but his fears were thick upon him. His bravery bore their weight, but stooped a little beneath them. He went in at the southward gate, that is named the Gate of the Doom. He came into a dark hall, and up a marble stairway passed to see the last of Tlunrana. At the top a curtain of black velvet hung, and he passed into a chamber heavily hung with curtains, with a gloom in it, that was blacker than anything they could account for. In a sombre chamber beyond, seen through a vacant archway, magicians with lighted tapers plied their wizardry and whispered incantations. All the rats in the place were passing away, going whimpering down the stairway. The man from the black-thatched cottage passed through that second chamber. The magicians did not look at him and did not cease to whisper. He passed from them through heavy curtains still of black velvet, and came into a chamber of black marble where nothing stirred. Only one taper burned in the third chamber. There were no windows. On the smooth floor and under the smooth wall a silk pavilion stood with its curtains drawn close together. This was the holy of holies of that ominous place, its inner mystery. One on each side of it, dark figures crouched, either of men or women or cloaked stone, or of beasts trained to be silent. When the awful stillness of the mystery was more than he could bear the man from the black thatched cottage by the five pine trees, went up to the silk pavilion, and with a bold and nervous clutch of the hand drew one of the curtains aside and saw the inner mystery, and laughed. And the prophecy was fulfilled, and Thlunrana was never more a terror to the valley, but the magicians passed away from their terrific halls and fled through the open fields, wailing and beating their breasts, for laughter was the enemy that was doomed to come against Thlunrana through her southward gate, that was named the Gate of the Doom, and it is of the gods, but dwells with man.